Hello there, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast, a show where we take a closer look at nutrition trends, research, and headlines so that you can make more informed decisions about what you eat. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today I want to talk about an interesting paradox that was revealed by a recent survey of consumer attitudes about food and nutrition. It was conducted by the International Food Information Council, an organization that regularly takes the pulse of consumers on various issues relating to food, diet, and health. Their most recent annual survey just came out, and as always, this one explored a wide range of topics, including the impacts of stress on our food choices, the influence of social media on nutrition decisions, snacking trends, beliefs about added sugars, and the degree of confidence that consumers feel in the safety of our food supply. I'll be talking about more of these findings in future episodes, but today I want to zero in on an apparent contradiction that was revealed by the survey. Three quarters of Americans reported snacking at least once a day, most people two or three or more times per day. But at the same time, two thirds said they are trying to avoid processed foods. But what are they snacking on? Mostly processed foods. So what is the disconnect here? First, let's take a look at how and why we are snacking so much. Getting hungry between meals is one reason that people reach for a snack, but a lot of snacking is simply due to habit. We snack because we're bored or we need a break from whatever we're doing. Often we get into the habit of snacking at particular times of day whether or not we're hungry. And sometimes it's just a crime of opportunity. We see something to eat, and so we eat it. According to various studies, snacks can account for 20 to 25% of our daily energy intake. Now, interestingly, some estimates suggest that the majority of Americans are also eating 20 to 25% more calories than they would need in order to maintain a healthy body weight. Hmm. Now, of course, it's absolutely possible to snack without exceeding our calorie budget by adjusting the size of our meals to compensate for our snacking patterns. And we also need to pay attention to portion sizes. However, this has become increasingly challenging because package sizes for snack foods have grown steadily over the years. These days, foods like chips or pretzels or candy, which are among the most popular snack choices, typically contain two to four servings in a package, but we are still treating those packages as single servings. So as a result, snacking may be adding a lot more calories to our diet than we realize. And despite our stated desire and intention to avoid or minimize processed foods, they remain the most popular snack choices. Some people do report choosing healthier snack options like nuts or fruit or vegetables. These are definitely in the minority. Now, part of this, I have no doubt, is driven by convenience. Packaged snack foods are available everywhere. And I mean everywhere. So they don't require any advanced planning or preparation. They're usually relatively inexpensive. You don't need a refrigerator the way you might if you wanted to snack on string cheese or yogurt or raw vegetables and hummus. You usually don't need any utensils either the way you might if you're snacking on apples and peanut butter or salad. And let's not overlook the fact that the kinds of processed foods that many of us prefer, they're not just convenient, they're also highly palatable. They frequently feature a combination of sugar and salt and fat that the reward centers in our brains find irresistible. So if you're a chip lover and you're trying to transition to raw vegetables as your afternoon snack, or a candy lover trying to switch to fresh fruit, 
It really does not feel like a fair fight, at least not at first. So what is our best move here? Is the goal to stop snacking altogether? Or should we focus on upgrading the quality of our snacks? I think the answer is probably a little bit of both. If you are snacking three or more times a day, chances are pretty good that these snacks are contributing more calories than you need in order to maintain a healthy body weight. So one goal might be to reduce the number of between-meal snacks to just one or two per day. If your schedule is such that you often have a long time between your major meals and you need that small snack in order to bridge the gap, well, that would probably be one to make room for or prioritize. If, on the other hand, you find yourself snacking more out of a desire for entertainment or stimulation or just out of habit, well, then you might want to look for other ways to boost your energy or take a break or even give yourself a small treat. Secondly, if snacks are going to be contributing 20 to 25% of our calories, I think they need to be pulling their weight nutritionally. We can't afford to throw away that proportion of our daily calorie intake on empty calories. And clearly, there is an opportunity for us to upgrade the quality of our snacks. But here, I think we need to distinguish between snacks as something we eat between our primary meals and snacks as a certain type of food we don't necessarily need to snack on so-called snack foods. So replacing chips or cookies with snacks that incorporate fruit, vegetables, cheese, hummus, yogurt, or nuts, that could have a really meaningful positive impact on our overall nutrient intakes and dietary quality. These fresh or minimally processed foods are also more likely to be more satiating and lower in calories, so they could also support our efforts to maintain a healthy body weight. And many of them are available in more convenient single-serving packages. Now, when it does come to chips or snack mixes or bars, we can look for those that offer more nutritional bang for the buck. Compare those labels to identify the ones, the options, that have a bit more fiber or a little bit more protein and or are lower in added sugar or calories. And while you're at it, checking out those labels, be sure to notice how many servings are in that package. Look for options that are made with whole grains or chips that are baked or air fried. And keeping a stash of those healthier options in your desk or your bag may make it a little bit easier to resist the temptation of vending machines or drive throughs Now, even after giving your snacks a nutritional upgrade, it's still important to be mindful of portion sizes. And if snacks are a regular part of your daily meal plan emphasis on plan, then you'll also want to adjust the size of your main meals to compensate for those additional eating occasions. And just one last observation, I think that the number of people who say that they're avoiding processed foods, even though they don't seem to actually be doing that, definitely reflects the current obsession with food processing as the root of all evil, which I don't believe it necessarily is. Contrary to a lot of hysterical reporting, I don't think that the degree of processing alone is a reliable way to categorize or to choose foods. Yes, there are a lot of highly processed snack foods that are extremely nutrient poor and may be contributing to excess intakes of calories, fat, sodium, or added sugars. However, there are also processed foods, even ultra-processed foods, that can play a very positive role in overall dietary quality and nutrient intakes. And you know what? I trust your ability to tell the difference. 
Got questions, comments about today's episode? You can always connect with me by email at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com, or you can leave me a voicemail at 443-961-6206. If you're looking for more support for healthy weight management, please check out the tools and the resources at wayless.life, where I help people create habits, mindset, and a lifestyle that help them weigh less without dieting. That's at wayless.life. And I'd also like to invite you to check out my other podcast. It's called The Change Academy, where we talk about the art and science of behavior change, actually putting those intentions into action in our own lives. You can find that on all the major podcast platforms. Just search for Change Academy. Nutrition Diva, meanwhile, is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and our team includes Brandon Getchis, Nathan Sems, Davina Tomlin, Holly Hutchings, and Morgan Christensen. That's all for this episode. Thanks so much for listening. I'll be back next week.